I'm honored to introduce to you K-State's College of Veterinary Medicine 2024 Alumni Fellow, Dr. Howard Erickson. Howard, congratulations on receiving this honor and thanks for talking with us today. Thank you very much. Howard, we'll talk about what you've done post-veterinary medicine school, but beforehand, what brought you to Kansas State University? Well, I had a choice of coming to Kansas State University or Iowa State University, I guess possibly Colorado State too. I'm from Nebraska originally, so Nebraska didn't have a College of Veterinary Medicine, so I had to pick one of those three. And we had a pastor that used to be the pastor down here at First Lutheran. And so we first made a trip down here to Kansas State to visit Kansas State, and we were very pleased with what we saw down here. So I didn't even make a trip to Iowa State University. Did you always know you wanted to go into veterinary medicine or something you discovered later in life? I think I probably discovered it later in life. I was in 4-H as a youth, and uh, you know, I, I liked animals, but uh, I, I think it was something I probably discovered later in life, yes. And what was it like your time here at veterinary medicine, at the College of Veterinary Medicine here at Kansas State University? Well, it was a little, it was probably a little different than than it is now. Uh, my class was an all-male class of no women in the class. I think there had been a few women a few years before and there were a few uh, the years afterwards. And of course now we have probably 75 percent women, but my class was an all-male class. So that was a little different. But we had uh, we had an outstanding class, and I had a class of uh, primarily uh, Korean War veterans, a few World War II veterans as well, too. And then there were a few, what you call maybe green sticks, uh, some of us that had not, not been in the service. And what were some of your favorite parts of school here and at K-State? I think maybe some of the basic, basic sciences were probably some of my favorites. Uh, anatomy, of physiology. Uh, I probably liked all the courses that I took, actually. And you mentioned a little bit about military, and you did go into the U.S. Air Force after vet school, and why was that? Well, we had a military requirement. Uh, most of my classmates had already served in the armed forces, but if you didn't go in, you were probably likely to be drafted. And uh, there were some that were probably drafted afterwards into the Vietnam Vietnam War. But uh, I had a military, military commitment to serve, so I had an option to go into the Army or the Air Force. And I'm not sure why I picked the Air Force. Uh, probably half of my class, uh, probably less than half, picked the Army. And the rest of us picked, picked the Air Force. Probably five or six, I think, picked the Air Force. And how long did you spend in the U.S. Air Force? Uh, nearly 22 years. And did you use your veterinary medicine doctorate degree while you were there? Yes, yes I did. I, my first assignment was over in England, uh, north of London, about uh, 50 miles at a uh, strategic air command base. And uh, I had to visit the uh, bakeries, the dairies, other establishments that provided food for the armed forces. Uh, Cadbury's Chocolate Factory, for example, a cheese factory. I had to look out for the public health aspects of the uh, base, uh, visit the dining halls and so forth. I had a small clinic, take care of the pets on the base, vaccinate them for rabies and distemper, uh, provide health certificates. I had uh, commanding general or command, commanding officer had a polo pony and uh, when he was returning to the, uh, to the States, he wanted to take his polo pony back uh, home with him. He was a West Point graduate. So I had to write a health certificate, examine the horse before he took his, uh, his horse back with him to the, to the U.S. As you were in the U.S. Air Force, you also went to Iowa, Iowa State University and got a Ph.D. in veterinary physiology. And why is that something you chose to do? Well, I was... I was looking for practice to come back here to practice, actually. And it was difficult to find something from overseas, actually. 
and I had a commanding officer that encouraged me to stay in. And uh, the Air Force sponsored my education, and uh, they sponsored my education to go to graduate school. So I was uh, reading the uh, AVMA journal, and the space program was being launched at that particular point in time. And they were putting primates into space and uh, so forth. And there was a biomedical engineering program at Iowa State University. And so that was what intrigued me. And so I majored in physiology at Iowa State University, and I minored in biomedical engineering and, and bio, biochemistry at Iowa State. And after you served those many years in the U.S. Air Force, what was it like to come back to Manhattan? Well, it was like coming back home again, coming back to, uh, to Manhattan. And I, I was trained in physiology, and I was trained in cardiovascular physiology at Iowa State University because the project my major professor had was on an artificial heart. And I was on a, in a cardiovascular research program at the School of Aerospace Medicine. So when I joined the faculty here, I taught cardiovascular physiology here and also taught renal physiology and a couple of graduate courses too. I think I taught a graduate course in exercise physiology and a graduate course in cardiovascular physiology as well too. So it, it took a little learning because it was a little different from what I'd, I was primarily in research in the Air Force. So I had to uh, kind of retrain myself in terms of, in terms of teaching because there was, uh, was a little different, uh, a little different philosophy here. And diving into you being what's considered an outstanding instructor and receiving many honors because you were an instructor for many students, what was something you hoped to teach those students beyond just veterinary medicine? Well, I guess the one thing I'd like to encourage students is to lifelong learning, be active in your community. Uh, you know, many of my mentors have been active in the community. They've been mayors of their local local town. They've been active in professional organizations. So I've encouraged students to be active in their community. That's the one thing I've encouraged students to do. And do you ever hear from those students after they've taken your classes and are out in the real world now? Occasionally I do hear from some of them, yes. You mentioned your research and you are noted as a prominent researcher in exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage, hemorrhage in horses. And how did you choose to do that research? I guess things kind of evolve. Uh, I started out working with pigs here, uh, initially here. We had a thrust in um, respiratory disease and Dr. Fetty was studying it in cattle. He suggested I study the pig. And Dr. Kaufman had joined the faculty about the same time. He said, we need to think about the horse. And so we started studying the uh, studying the horse, and we first started looking at training and detraining, and I think it evolved into exercise-induced pulmonary hemorrhage. And uh, I think that's how it evolved. And then it evolved into this uh, flare nasal strip that, I don't know if you've heard about that <clears throat> or not, but it was, uh, there were two Minnesota veterinarians that, uh, uh, observed that the nasal passages of horses are not supported by bone. And so they had, they came to us and uh, asked us if we would uh, do some research on this strip, you see. And we had graduate students that needed support. So uh, we probably did probably five, ten, ten years of support on that particular project. And as you were here as a student and then came back as an instructor and still spend a little bit of time teaching, even though you have retired from being full-time, how have you seen research develop in your eyes? I think it's becoming uh, more technical, uh, more cell-based. Uh, it's changed over the years, uh, very much so. And something that I consider a bit of a passion project for you. You've been doing a lot of work at looking at the history of veterinary medicine, and why is that something you chose to do? I, I guess it, it started with uh, 
a dean named R Ron Marler that came here in, I think, 1994. And he said, our, uh, our centennial's coming up in about 10 years. And he said, I don't think we're documenting our history very well. So he said, I think we need a history committee here. And he asked for volunteers to be on the, uh, on the history committee. So I volunteered to be on the history committee. And from that, uh, Dr. Elmore, our associate dean, was asked to uh, write the history of our college, and he asked me to help write the history of our college. So I ended up being a co-author on the Century of Excellence, which is a book on the history of our college and published in 2005, uh, which was our centennial. It's kind of a rolling centennial because our program was started in 1905 and our first class graduated in 1907. So it's kind of a rolling centennial. Were there a few favorite facts that you learned when you did all that research for 100 years? Well, there are lots of facts that <laughs> you, I learned. I learned a lot over the years, and there's still a lot that I don't know, really. So, yes. And Howard, as you are a professor emeritus and have been for 13 years now, how do you continue to share your love for K-State and veterinary medicine with others? Well, I guess I, I've done that with uh, the students in my history elective. Primarily, I've taught it for 10, 12 years now. And uh, the other way I've done it is being active in the American Veterinary Medical History Society. I've been active on the Publications Committee and uh, uh, some other committees there as well, too. There's a, we've got a museum committee, and uh, we have a pretty good museum collection here in our college. We've got uh, cases downstairs and instruments. We've got the composite pictures of uh, all our classes going back to 1907. We've got the uh, video biographies that uh, Kent's helped take and Sharon Green has coordinated here. And uh, we've got composite uh, photographs of the Kansas City Veterinary College, the St. Joseph Veterinary College. And uh, I think these all need to be tied together in a link so that people don't, a lot of them can't come here to see those because there are, some of these things are in storage but they could see them virtually. So they could uh, go to a link and they could see some of those things. Howard, we've talked a lot about what you did with the U.S. Air Force at K-State with veterinary medicine, but outside of all of that, what are things you enjoy doing? Well, we have some good lectures up at uh, Meadowlark where I live. I live at the Meadowlark Hills retired retirement community. Uh, when it first opened, some people suggested they call it Hobble Inn up there. But uh, uh, we've had Robert Smith, he's the uh, curator, the director of museums from Fort Riley, and he's, he's coming to give some lectures on, I think, World War II. He's uh, given some lectures on the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and World War I. And uh, so we get some outstanding lectures up there, and we get some other outstanding programs. We had a a lecture recently up there on artificial intelligence, for example. So, so we get a number of good things, and uh, we just enjoy living there. We uh, we eat all of our evening meals down in the dining room down there, and it's you never know who you're going to end up eating with, and sometimes it's just kind of like entertaining somebody in your own home. So, it's a great place to be. Howard, as you were part of the class, Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, class of 1959, any thoughts you'd like to share with people who are thinking about going into veterinary medicine or maybe graduating soon? Well, I would say that veterinary medicine is a field that has many opportunities. You know, you can go into the private practice, you can go into uh, the armed forces, you can go into academia, you can go into industry. You can go into government work. There, there are just all kinds of opportunities in veterinary medicine. So the field is wide open. And the other things, they're, they're building, they're thinking of building 10 new colleges of veterinary medicine right now. 
which is kind of mind-boggling, but it looks like the demand is there. So the field looks like it's wide open, really. So, Howard, thank you for giving us the time to talk to you today, and congratulations on being this year's 2024 Alumni Fellow for the College of Veterinary Medicine. Thank you. That was Dr. Howard Erickson, class of 1959, from K-State's College of Veterinary Medicine, and this year's Alumni Fellow.